If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. Today we are finishing up our filament package series and if you are new to this series or you're new to the channel or what have you, the last three projects were all filament and this is now the end of our filament series which means that I won't be touching filament for quite some time. I know that three has come out yet, I'm not sure if it's been released by the time you're watching this video but hopefully this series will still be relevant by the time it comes out, who knows. Today what I want to work on is the settings. Now when I say settings, I'm talking about things within our project. So things like the title of the project, things like the footer we can change as well. And these are things that you can use on the front end. So let's head over to the filament plugin documentation and see if we can find one. Now if you go over to the filament documentation and head over to the plugins tab, it'll bring you to this page right here where you can do a search for any kind of plugin that you want. For the most part, people have been able to put these packages together and make them for filament, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and type in settings and this is going to bring up four different potential plugins that we can use. Now I have installed and played around with three out of these four. I didn't touch this one, so I can't really speak to that one, but the dynamic settings page by Ibrahim Badir. It was, it was okay. I installed it and everything, but my issue was that there was a error within the input field and you just couldn't get rid of it. Like, you know, when you install it and you start working on it, if you put anything in there, it just has this error on it and it just wasn't a great experience. Something you could also do is use Spady settings and Spady settings is basically a package that is built on top of Laravel settings, which is a package by the same people, but it's made for filament. So this is something potentially we could use, but I wanted to try something different. I wanted to go lightweight. This would basically put your settings in your database and it, it is a good tool, but it isn't exactly what I was looking for. So that being said, I ended up going with the settings value store by Quentin Buis. Buis. Sorry if I'm not saying that right, but this guy right now, this is actually built on top of a different Spady package called value store that is designed to work with Laravel by the same people, except it is much more lightweight. So I'm just going to go ahead, click that, and it's going to take us to this page, which will allow us to go to the repo. So I'm going to click that. And here we are. Now it's a very easy setup. As I said, it is leveraging Spady's value store package. So we will have to go there to grab some information, but also this package itself installs this Spady's value store package as well. So that's how it's leveraging it. So as you can see, there's a config file, group settings, label settings, and it's got a storage path because what this package is doing is any setting that you create, it's not putting it in the database, but what it's doing is it's putting it in a storage file so that you can make changes to it even within the storage file. Nothing's hitting your database. That file you can ship with either your client or whatever team members you're having. So everyone has the same thing on the page. All we want to do is really require it. And let's head into the text editor and get started. Here, I'm just going to open up the terminal. I'm going to do sales since that's what I'm using. But if you're not, you can use Composer, whatever your environment is, everybody's is different. So go ahead, press enter and let that install. Great. So let's go and take a look at the next step. We can publish the config file. And then we can also publish the views. You don't really need to, but I'm going to publish them anyway, because for all the packages that we used, I basically just published all of those files so that you could take a look at them in your own time. Okay, so let's go ahead and drop this and take a look really quick before we continue on. So our views are in the vendor, element settings, settings.blade you can see that there's a form with a submit everything is handled for us we don't have to worry about the functionality but if you wanted to change maybe some of the styling for that button then you could for that settings page then you could absolutely do that here we can go to the config folder and go to filament settings and as you can see this is the same info that we just looked at in the documentation so great let's go ahead continue on with the docs we can define our fields by adding the following in the boot method of the app service provider. We do have an app service provider, but more importantly, we have a filament service provider. So we can actually just do that there. 
This is in our app folder in our providers. This is our app service provider, which we have this. We could actually move these as well, but I'm going to open up our service provider here and I'm going to drop this under here. And then here we can just drop these in. So I'm going to also grab these. And I'm going to put them at the top of our filament service provider. And we can also get rid of these from that as we're not using them. And we can import these here. Not really sure why we're getting this just yet. This little squiggly line, it could just be VS Code. But we're going to continue with docs and see if this has any issue. Now, the next thing that we do need to put in our user model is this can manage settings. And this is going to allow our users to access this page. So we'll go to our user model. We'll go down to, just put it down here. Paste that in. That should be good. Let's go and see if we're having any issues on the front end. That looks good. And this is actually going to a settings route. We'll handle that in a minute. But as you can see, we have an input field where we can save things now. And this is an actual page. This is coming from the vendor folders. That's just what's being provided to us. So what I want to do is I want to actually create a link to this page first. So I'm just going to go here so we can see it here and then click it and stuff like that. So let's go ahead to the text editor and create a link to that page. So Filament has a way of creating that navigation link without actually having a page set up for it. So what we can do here is Filament, import that facade, and then it's serving function. And we're doing this in our Filament service provider. Now we can do Filament, register navigation items. And then we can do navigation item, make, call it settings for the name of the link, what's being displayed. And then the URL will make it route, element, pages, settings. And if you're not sure where I'm getting that, if you open up the terminal, you can do sale artisan or PHP artisan route list. And if we go up to where our filament pages are being displayed, you see we have logout, the assets file, admins, admin settings, that's what we're looking at. And then it's filament pages settings, that's the name of the route. So we can also do the icon. I'm just going to use the cog since that's typically what the settings icon would be. These are hero icons. And that should be good. Let's see if we have that link now. There we go. We have it right here. So we can actually just click it and look at that. We've been brought back to our settings page. Now let's go ahead and work on this. Before we get to the title, which will be up here, I want to first demonstrate how we would change this footer here. So in the service provider, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to make footer as what that is. Let me close this. And there we go. So we have a footer. Let's go ahead and change it. So it's been saved. So if we refresh the page, it's still being persisted in our page. Let's go and see where this is showing up. Well, as I showed you before in the configuration file, the filament settings, the path is to app slash settings.json. So we can go down to our storage folder app and you can see it here, settings.json. As you can see, our title's null because we didn't put anything in there, but our footer is some kind of footer and that's how it's being displayed. But I want that to display down here. So what we can do is go to this footer component and change it. I can go ahead and close this now. And I can close this. So to find that footer, we'll go to resources, views, vendor, we'll go to the filament folder, components, and if you go all the way down, you see the footer.blade.php. 
this is where that's being displayed. So what we can do is it's showing if the layout footer should show logo. So anytime the logo should show, then we should be able to see it. So right now we can go ahead and delete this SVG. Okay, as you can see, now it's gone. And instead, we'll do some curly brackets. And then we can do spady value store value store make. These are one of the functions that we got from the Spady's value store documentation. And then we can also do storage path. Just like it was in the config. And now after we make it, we can get. We're really just instantiating it so that we can access that value. And for the get, we'll just use the footer because that's the name we gave it in the service provider. So let's go and see if now we can see that footer with, with this settings.json. So we should be able to see this now as our footer. Look at that, you can see it here and it has the same hover state and everything that we had for it before. And if you click it, it'll take you to that link, which is just to the filament website. And here we can put some kind of title. It's been saved. If we refresh it, it should still be here. Great. And now you can see it's been updated in the settings.json in JSON format, obviously. So that's pretty powerful. Now we need to figure out how we can get this to display wherever the title of our page is being displayed. Typically, those things are displayed from the config file. So let's close the footer. And if we go to the config folder and we go to our filament.php, this is where our title is being displayed. So we want to scroll down because that's called the brand. And as you can see, it is set to our environment variables for app underscore name, which by default is Laravel. But what we can do is the same thing that we did in the footer. So now we can grab this and we'll do spady value store value store make storage path app settings.json just like we did in the footer now we want to get title we have the full namespace for this here so don't worry about the squiggly line and that's probably what's going on in that service provider as well but we should be able to see it now so this should be changing to some kind of title hey look at that it has been displayed as a title and this is global within filament. We can go to any page and it's global within our filament. Now I know someone's going to ask me, how do we get this on the front end, right? So let's go to, let's say dashboard. So you see dashboard and our title for these pages are dashboard. If we go to the profile, something like that, and you can't actually see this because I have it above where the screen is displaying right now. But if I hover, you can see a little bit Laravel local host. I'll make sure to make this bigger in the video so that you can see. But right now we have the config app name, which is Laravel. That's the default. So what we can do for that is go to the app.php because that's where our app name is being displayed from throughout the front end of our project. It's name app name, that's where this is being displayed. So we can actually do the same thing. In fact, I'm going to copy it. Okay, let's go and see if it's now on, on that. Okay, now if you hover, you see that it's some kind of title and that's what we were looking to do. If you're enjoying the content, please click that like button as it really does help out the channel. Here's a video YouTube thinks you'll like and here's a playlist to follow along. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.